Thank you, team. Amen. Look at somebody and ask them, do you believe what you just sang? Do you believe what you just sang? Amen. Hallelujah. Give a shout, Lord. Have a seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise be to God. You know, we sing a lot of things, don't we? Sing a lot of good songs. Uh, we uh, hear a lot of good preaching and teaching everywhere. We even quote a lot of scriptures and do a lot of things. But the question is, do we really, when the, when the rubber hits the road, I mean, do you really, when it's, when it's not just church time, I mean, do you really believe it? Amen. Amen. It'll make a difference, doesn't it? Amen. This morning, I'm going to speak to you just for a few moments, amen, of something I entitled, A Picture of Faith. Somebody say, A Picture of Faith. What's a picture? A picture is a visual representation of a person. Listen, what's a picture? A picture is a visual representation of a person or an object or a scene or something. It's also a mental picture. It's a representation. Amen. So listen to me. A picture, again, is a representation of a person or an object or something or a scene. Amen. A picture. And it's really important that we get this picture in our mind, in our spirit, but in our mind of who we really are if we really believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. You don't have to turn there. God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. What's he, what was he saying? He's saying we're going to make man as a perfect representation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. An image is a picture. So you could say God said, let us make a picture. Let us make them as a picture of who we are. Amen. See, we are a picture of who God is. We're made in his image. And that's what a picture is. It's an image. It's a representation of somebody or something. We are the representation as believers. We are the representation of God. So every time you're nasty to somebody, you're being nasty to the representation of God. Amen. I mean, if you're a believer, if they're born again. Amen. Not everybody's a child of God. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Because that's something that you become when you believe, when you become born again. Now turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. A picture of faith. Colossians chapter 3. And let's begin in, uh, there's so much we could read before that, but Let's just take this verse here, verse 10. He says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So then before that it talks about put away lying. In other words, don't do all the things, amen, you used to do. Amen. Before you found out who you really were. So he's saying, now, he's saying, you put off the old man, put on the new. What is the new man you're putting on? You are putting on the image. I'm putting on the image of the Lord, amen. I've taken off my old image, which really is made of the world, is made of the ruler of the world, the devil, amen. I'm taking off that image, amen, that could lie, steal, cheat, amen. Lie, 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 steal, steal, and cheat, amen, and do everything else. But now I'm putting on what? I'm putting on the new man. I'm putting on a new image. I have a new picture. Amen. I'm not supposed to look like the old picture. I've got a new picture. Amen. And I'm putting on that picture, and that picture is supposed to be just like Jesus. Oh, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop and think about it for a moment. When people think of you, what do they see? When people think of you, what do they see? You're not in front of them. You're not in front of somebody. When I think of Vernon Bryant, he's, I don't, I'm not looking at him. What do I see? Huh? 
How do people see you? What picture do they have of you? See, it's also a mental image. How do I see you? How do you see others? Amen? See, we've got to get a hold of this. Amen? In fact, the biggest, best picture is how do you see yourself? What picture do you have painted of yourself? Are you, do you have a picture of you as a child of God? Or do you have a picture of you as... Put up that... Uh, put up that picture mark. There you go. Now, that's a good picture. But it doesn't represent who I am today. I am not that guy with the hammer. See, there comes a point that that's a picture that says that's what Christ does and that's what we all need. But how many know there has to be a point where I'm no longer that guy with the hammer? I have a, there's a different picture of me, amen. In fact, if you could look at it this way, you say, my new picture is as one just like Jesus helping others, amen, lift themselves up, amen, from where they've been. See, because a lot of times we look at, oh, that's me. No, that isn't me. That's who I was. You want to really see me? Look at the guy behind there holding them up. That's the image that I'm made in. That's my picture. That's your picture. See, what happens to us is that, you know why we continue a lot of times, amen, as believers, wanting to do the right things and continue to do the wrong things, continue to be messed up, is because we never get beyond this picture. I am no longer the guy with the hammer and the nail needing to be lifted up all the time. Because if that's how you see yourself, then you're always going to be need to be lifted up because you're always going to pick up the hammer and the nail. Amen? And we've got to get a hold of that. There's a different picture. You know, I look at it this way. You know, God's got a kingdom, you know, and he's got a big palace, so to say. And in there, boy, he's got a, it's a huge palace. He's got pictures all on the wall. Hallelujah. And he's always had your picture and my picture on the wall. How he sees us and who and how and what we're supposed to be. We don't always match that picture, but that's how God sees us. He has a picture of us, amen? Hallelujah. But see, this was my picture and your, maybe yours, but now it's no longer that. See, we grow in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of who we are. And as I grow in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of who I am, guess what happens? My picture begins to change. God's picture doesn't change. He already sees me as his son, righteous, forgiven, blessed, but I don't. See, a lot of times I'm still here, or you're still there. But see, as we grow, like the Bible, like it said in Colossians, we grow and renew in the knowledge of who I am and who God is, it begins to change my picture of myself. How many know the picture of yourself is the most important picture there is? The way you see your picture, the way you draw your picture, amen, the one you put on your wall. Amen. See, I'm not a prodigal son. Well, yeah, I'm a prodigal son. Well, you know, it's time to get over being a prodigal son. It's start, start time to see a picture of you not as the prodigal son, amen, but as somebody trying to help the prodigal get back home, maybe. Amen. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times we need, we need to grow in the knowledge of who God is and who we are. Amen. Look at, the, go to 1 John. Go to 1 John. See, the Bible is our picture of who we are. The Bible shows me who I am. Amen. That's why, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, Revelation, I had Hebrews 10, 17, where God says, I remember the sins and equities no more. It's so important, amen, because it painted a new picture of me. When I got a hold of that revelation, it changed my picture. As one who has never sinned. Yeah, but you sinned. Yeah, it doesn't matter that. It says he doesn't look at it that way. Amen. Hallelujah. And see, so we've got to get a hold of this. It changes your picture. And if it changes the picture of yourself, guess what will happen? It will change the picture you have of others. Woo! It will change the way you live. Hallelujah. You, you won't be Mr. Drama King or Drama Queen. Amen. There's no, listen. 
Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. So go to, there in 1 John chapter 4, and let's look at, uh, well, let's begin in uh, verse 15 a minute. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is God, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because, somebody say because. Get ready now. Because. Are you ready? Get, say, say get ready. Because. Come on, repeat. Say, because. because. Repeat it with me. Because. because. As. As. He, is. he is. So are we. So are we. In, this world. In this world. Break it down again. Listen. Say, be. Herein is love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Say, because. because. As he is. As. Who? Jesus. As he is. That means as he is right now, so are we, come on, so are we we. in this world. world. We are are. right now just like Jesus is. He's in heaven, but we're here, and we are just like him. The picture is I look like my brother, Jesus, because we got the same father, God. Amen. As he is right now, so are we in the world. And how is he right now? He's at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He ain't on the cross, and he ain't in the grave. Listen, he's overcome. So the picture we got to have is this. is We are just like him. The picture is we are pictures of overcomers. Amen. Woo. You got to get a hold of that. As he is, so are we in this world. Get your picture. Begin to paint it. You begin to paint the picture of yourself according to the description. Hmm. I'm righteous. Forgiven. I'm blessed. Blessed going in, blessed going out. Mm, That means I'm blessed everywhere. Ooh, 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 I'm a son of God. I'm an heir with Jesus Christ. Oh, my brother. Don't don't get upset religious with me now. Don't understand what we're saying. I know religious folks, why you say I'm not? Get a hold of the picture. Amen. Get a hold of the picture. If you've been a prodigal, guess what? The father's always waiting for you to come home, but in this picture of the prodigal, when he comes home, the father celebrates him, but his brother celebrates him too because his brother's Jesus. See, we don't have a brother that's upset with us. We have a brother that's been done everything to get us home. Oh, come on. Amen. You know, all the verbal descriptions you want to give on yourself, I am this, I am that, that's fine. But unless you act them out, they're not real. Somebody say, what's the picture of your faith? See, your daily actions, my daily picture is who I really am. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. There's daily pictures of faith, amen. If you're a true believer, you'll understand and you'll be able to see the description that God has made of you and what you're supposed to look like, amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we only act out what we believe. You can come to church and do some acting, amen, but maybe, hopefully it's not just an act. But you can only act out or do what you believe, amen? But you got to do what you believe all the time. See, I don't do what I believe just because I'm in this building. i got to do what I believe when I'm outside the building, amen? Come on, amen? we got to get that picture of ourselves. 
You know, when you get to sing that song, you split the Red Sea so I can walk right through it, you need to see yourself walking through every Red Sea that comes before you. Amen? Because God is splitting that Red Sea. God is on your side. Amen? God is the one that makes victory available to us. Amen? Even as believers today, and even if we see ourselves as a picture of a son of God and a child of God, we still understand that there are Red Seas, amen, that might be in front of us, and we got to see God splitting that Red Sea. you got to get a picture of faith. Get a picture of faith on you. When there's a red sea in front of you, get a picture. God's doing it again. He's splitting that red sea for me so I can walk right through it. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2, let's begin in verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. How many know you can't show nobody faith unless there's something there's something happening? You can talk about how much faith you got, but there's got to be some coordinated actions with it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe, okay, well, how come you don't do anything? How come you don't go to church? How come you never pray? How come that, that's that's you, you just got to you're trying to paint a picture, amen. It doesn't exist in your in your life. It, it exists in God's hallway, but not in yours. See, a lot of times we're trying to paint pictures of ourselves, amen, but we don't listen. I believe God, and God is that all things are possible with God, and nothing shall be impossible to him that believeth, amen. But then something comes up, amen, and you don't have the corresponding action, amen. Your picture is not as one who's going to overcome. Your picture is one who's like, I'm going to drown in the Red Sea. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not good that you drown the Red Sea. I know what you mean. <laughs> Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now look what it says, verse uh, 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Do you do well? The devils also believe and tremble. See, so when we're talking about believing, it's more than this mental belief and say, I believe in God because the devil, guess what? The devil believes in God too. The devil's not an unbeliever. The devil hung out with God. Remember that, amen? He knows God. But he's rebellious, amen? Prideful. See, the devil had a different picture of himself. He saw God and even though he's supposed to be like God, but he wanted to be just more than just look like God. He wanted to take his place. Amen. So he had a picture of, I'm better than God. Oh, Jesus. Amen. So if you say you believe, that's fine, but the devil believes too. That means that there, your, your faith is not a picture of somebody saying, I believe. It's somebody, see, there are faith pictures in our lives. You have to figure it out. You have to see what is the faith pictures of your life. We all have faith pictures to one extent or another. And we'll, we'll go to there in a moment, amen? Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, corresponding actions is what? It's no good. It's dead. Amen. So what we're talking about is, amen, all our verbal descriptions of ourselves and all that, they're fine but there has to be a corresponding lifestyle attached to that. That means there has to be a picture, a lot of pictures of me operating in faith, of me trusting God, believing God, and trusting God. Amen? In fact, you could say there should be a video. Amen? But there has to be pictures of faith. Amen? Look at somebody and say, what's your picture look like? Go to Genesis chapter 12. A 
little slower this morning. I, I finally started a new Bible after three years. And, you know, when you start a new Bible, they, they don't move as quick. You know what I mean? You know, when you get used to a Bible, see, when I change Bibles because it forces me then to, to have to dig a little bit deeper. Because how many you know after a couple of years you get used to where a scripture, well, you can turn there, you know, it's on the right side about a quarter of the way down. <laughs> now you get a new Bible and it's not there. <laughs> so you got to dig a little deeper, amen. And then the pages don't move as fast. Look at Genesis chapter 12 and let's look at something here. And we'll begin in verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Now we've, we've talked about this before. He's, God's telling him, Go, get, leave home, pack your bags, get all the family, get everything together, load the camels up, get the sheep, amen, and get going to a land I'm going to show you. To a land I'm going to show you. So Abraham packs everybody up. Dad, I'm leaving. Where are you going? God told me to pack up and leave. Where are you going? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? He said, just get going. He'd show me where I'm going once I get going. Isn't that something? Sometimes you got to get going and find out where you're really going. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes, see, everything ain't laid out perfect. Sometimes you just got to start taking them steps. How many know that when Abraham packed them camels up, a picture of faith? How many know when Abraham bid his daddy goodbye, a picture of faith? How many know when they started that journey, they started going, where are you going? I don't know. We're waiting God to show us. We're just going. How many know that was a picture of faith? Do we see that Abraham, why he's called the father of faith, is because he was going where he didn't know. He was just obeying God. See, Ask yourself, amen, is that my picture, amen? Do I have to have everything perfectly laid out, amen? If I do, then I don't need no faith, amen? But see, Abraham, when he got going, that was a picture. I mean, I think, I think I'm going to put it this way, okay? I think God saw that and he goes, my man Abraham, Holy Ghost, put that up on the wall. What? Abraham leaving, not knowing where he's going. He said, man, that's a picture. That's going to go later on in my hall of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. How many know Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the hall of faith? How many those are pictures of people operating in the trusting God? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's finish it up. He tells me, he said, I'll make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you, and these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed. I wrote in my new Bible, faith. Abraham departed. That's a picture of faith. See, faith without works is dead. Abraham, when he packed his bags and he started, that was the work of faith. Amen. You want to see faith? Watch Abraham pack his bags and leave, not knowing where he's going. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. It wasn't just a whim. It wasn't somebody say, hey, you ever thought of heading out to this other land that might be somewhere? Uh, no. You ever thought of this? No. It was God speaking to him. And so what did he do? So he, he responded to what God said, and that was a perfect picture of faith. Amen. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now you can see Abraham saying, wait a minute, I'm 75. Amen. I'm drawing my Social Security now. <laughs> I got my Medicare and everything. What, you want me to leave? You know, I'm, I'm comfortable. You can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> Amen. And Abraham took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance, everything they owned, and they had gathered, and all this, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go unto the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Now when he when God told him to go, he didn't tell him to send you to Canaan. That came afterwards. Amen. So <clears throat> if you want to see a perfect picture of faith, it's right here. Amen. Every one of us as believers have the capacity 
to have our picture in that hall of faith. Amen? Hallelujah. So you just have to ask yourself, what actions are you taking today? What pictures do you see yourself operating in faith? Amen? You know, a lot of times, uh, if we look at it, what happens to us a lot of times, these pictures of faith don't make any sense. In fact, in the natural, you get ridiculed for it. How I many know that everybody saw Abraham going that they say, where are you going, fool? You don't even know where you're going. Whoever went on a trip and they didn't know where they were going. Well, I even heard Pastor Fur speak, amen, that they don't sell tickets just to get out of town. There's always a destination. How can you get going? You don't even have a, you don't even know where you're going. You're right, I don't, but I'm trusting God said he would show me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, amen. So sometimes even things, amen, our picture of faith sometimes will look stupid, unreasonable, and be ridiculed, amen. But you've got to believe, amen, that that's really what God's doing with your life. That picture, amen, may look foolish now. Oh, but one day, one day, a lot of people will come and say, wow, I can't believe what God's done with you. I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done that. Yeah, but they didn't believe it when you started to doing it. In fact, they try to draw you a different picture. They try to tell you, you're being a fool. I may know that anybody, that, that happened to you, that happened in my life. I would tell people, people what I'm going to do, and they begin to draw me a different picture. Well, you could do this and be this instead. And, but I had another picture already drawn, amen. It was a picture God drew, amen. So I wasn't going to, they wanted to give me another picture. You've heard me tell the story when I told this guy what I was going to do in my life, and he said, listen, you're still young enough. You can go back to law school and finish, amen, what you, what you didn't finish. You could do this. You could do that. You could do all this. I was only 40 then. So you could do all this. He was trying to paint me another picture. Then he painted me a picture. He said, look at me. <sighs> look at him. He's driving a Cadillac. And I was driving a, a Ford Ranger pickup truck. You could do all this. He was trying to give me a different picture. He was trying to see me inside the Cadillac. But I had a different picture. It was a picture of faith that God had given me what I would be doing, amen? And I wasn't in the ministry yet. Or I was, yeah, I was by that time. Amen, I just started here, amen? And it was difficult times, amen? But, you know, the people try to paint you a different picture of what God says you are, amen? And it's not necessarily an evil picture, but it's not the picture of who you are today, amen? It's not the picture God wants of you, amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, you can read the Bible, and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of faith in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we could spend a lot of time, but stop and think about it. Think about pictures of trusting God and faith. You, know, you can think about Joseph, betrayed by his brother, sold into slavery. But at one point in time, what does he do? Through forgiveness, a picture of faith, what does he do? He comes to their rescue and saves the very ones that tried to, the ones that, that really got rid of him. Amen. How many know that's a picture of faith? Amen. Think about David. Look at David. Goliath is up on the hill. Everybody's afraid. And David comes up and he picks up three stones. That's a picture of faith. Gets his sling and he goes up to meet the giant. Faith. Why was it faith? Because he said, what God has done for me before, he's going to do it again. Amen. See, you have to have pictures of your faith in your own hall so that you can look at it and say, God did it back then. Woo! He's going to do it now. Amen. See, you have to have pictures of faith in your house, in, your, in this house. You have to have pictures, amen. It might not be a bad idea that you could put some real pictures up, amen? I have a few. See, but he was operating in faith. What well, was that faith? God was with me back then. He's going to be with me again. So that's a picture of faith, amen? Hallelujah. David. Now he's king. Bringing the ark in. 
dancing before the ark, being ridiculed. How many know that was a picture of fate? Amen. Think about Noah. Oh, my God. When Noah was building the ark, there was no such thing as storms. Now, now stop and listen to me. They didn't have rainy days. I don't know if you realize that. They didn't know what rain was. What are you doing, Noah? Building an ark. What for? There's a flood coming. A flood? What's a flood? Look at that fool. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? He obeying God. Amen. So when you see Noah, get a picture of Noah with the ark. That was a picture of faith. Amen. Because he was doing something there. Everybody said, what is he talking about, a flood? Who ever heard of such a thing? Amen. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes the pictures of faith in your life don't make any sense in the natural realm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it. Think about Job. Take a picture of Job. Everybody knows the story of Job, right? The picture of Job, amen. I mean, he's covered with sores. He's losing everything. I mean, he's losing everything. And his, and his good wife says, oh, Job, why you curse God and die? What a wife you got, amen. Praise the Lord. How many know we need a new wife, amen? <laughs> Job, curse God and die. And then all his friends come along to help him out, you know. They all got good, great advice too. But, but what, here's a picture of faith. He would not relent in believing God. He said, I will not curse my God. I, I may have made a... He may have made a mistake somewhere along the line, but you know what? He says, I will not. I mean, he did, not God. I will not curse God. Picture of faith. In the midst of troubles, in the midst of everything, he still, everybody tell him, just curse God. He said, I will not do it. Picture of faith. But wait a minute. Then the Bible says, the latter end of Job was greater than the beginning. <coughs> What's that mean? At the end, when it was all over, he stood strong in faith, and now he had more. He had double of what he had when the trouble started. He had more lands, more family, more everything. Figure that out. A picture of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Job. Peter. Think of Peter. Think of the disciples. Jesus comes along and says, follow me. And they leave everything that they know. They leave their livelihood. The fishermen, they leave their nets, they leave everything. Follow me. Picture of faith. They come along and here's Matthew collecting taxes, right? And, you know, probably skimming too because that's the tax collector. They collect tax. And, amen. Follow me. Leaves it all behind. Picture of faith to follow Jesus. Amen. Peter, stories you know, on the boat, in the night, in the water, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come. Come on, Pete. Steps out of that picture of faith, Peter stepping out on the water and standing there. But we know what happens, the storm rides up, he goes, ah, help me, Jesus. But how many know that was a Picture of faith. Think about this. Peter, I'll never deny you, Lord. We know what happens, right? Those are pictures. Some of them are, seem to be pictures of failure. But that picture of going out on the water was really not a picture of failure. It was a picture of faith. How many of us have stepped out to do things by faith, amen, and believe in God, and then something happened, and we almost want to give up or things don't seem to work out. Amen. But here was the, here, here, get the picture of faith now. Maybe you haven't seen it this way. He steps out on the water. He begins to sink. What does he do? What's he do? He calls on Jesus. Right? So do you see another picture of faith? I might be sinking in my faith, but I'm going to call out on the one that I've been trying to operate in faith in. Amen. Faith, picture of faith. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Peter. Jesus says, I'm leaving now. This is my version. I'm leaving now, but you guys go back to Jerusalem and wait there. Amen. You receive the Holy Ghost. And they're like, the Holy Ghost? Amen. Because remember, even in the Bible, the book of Acts, later on, people are saying, what is, do we even know this is the Holy Ghost? And they all go, okay. And Peter says, let's go, guys. Takes 120 into the upper room, amen. They wait there. They start praying. What are they waiting for? They're not sure. Just a picture of faith. Then the day of Pentecost comes, and what, is, what happens? Peter leads the great, the beginning, the beginning of the greatest revival ever. Amen? And who leads it? Peter. Amen. See, because in God's kingdom, there was always a picture of Peter, the apostle. Peter, the one that would preach on the day of Pentecost and get 3,000 plus people saved. Peter, the one that looked like he was drunk, but he said, uh-uh, we all filled with the Holy Ghost. See, in God's kingdom, in his house, there's a different picture than maybe you see of yourself now. There's a different picture of maybe the other see. Amen? Paul, how about a picture of Paul? On the Damascus Road, knocked down. Lord, what do you want me to do? Faith. Go to Mark chapter 2. I went on the internet and I, I wanted some pictures. I found the picture, but I forgot to get it loaded up to bring it to be able to bring it here. So I, I think this is what, I think this is one of the pictures, amen, that I got a frame. Amen. Here's a picture of faith, amen. You all know it, but look at it. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus was at Capernaum and he was uh, preaching and uh, there were a lot of people there, and there was no more room for people to come in. It'd be like the church here. It's so packed, nobody can get in. It's so packed, nobody can get in. I mean, it's so packed, nobody can get in. They're pressing in on the outside, but there ain't no room. Nobody can get in. And he was preaching the word. And there were a couple of men that come unto him, verse 3, bringing one sick of the palsy, which they bore, four of them, they bore on a stretcher, basically. And look at verse 4. And when they could not come near unto him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, how many know that faith is obviously visible? Faith has works attached to it. Faith without works is dead. These men, these four men bringing their brother there, they had faith. Amen. They weren't going to be stopped because it was, no, man, we're full, we can't let nobody else in. Fire marshal won't let you in. Amen. You understand I'm, you know, there's no fire marshal in the day of him. So I'm just messing, right? Could you see this? Look at this picture. I love this picture. There are several on the Internet. You see the guys on the roof tearing the roof off. And then you see Jesus and everybody's looking up. And the guys are looking down through the roof. Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their faith. What a picture of faith. These guys on the roof, it'd be like this, this place too full. All of a sudden we look up and somebody's up there tearing the roof off. What are you doing? We're getting in. 
That's a picture of faith. We're getting in where we say we can't get in. We're going to find a way, amen. See, let me tell you this, amen. If you believe, you're going to find a way, amen, because a lot of times we're ready to give up real easy. In fact, some people have showed up and said, "Woo, the church is packed, can't get in. All right, well, well let's all go on home, Mabel, amen, hallelujah. Well, let's all go on down to Denny's and eat now. Go to Fred's, hit the buffet. Everybody's busy in the church now. I just look at this thing, and in my new Bible, I wrote a picture of faith. When Jesus saw their faith, I think Jesus did like this. I think this. I think Jesus looked up. I think the Holy Ghost from heaven, amen, and I went like that. Woo! And if they had a newsletter in heaven, it'd be all over the newsletter. Faith in action. Hallelujah. There's so many others. You can think of some that I haven't thought of. Bartimaeus, Zacchaeus, etc. Pictures of faith. So my question to you is this, amen. What picture or pictures of faith do you have in your hall or on your wall? Amen. See, you can have them here and here. David had a picture of faith that God was with him when he was out, you know, taking care of the sheep and he helped them. So David had that picture that he could look back on and say, I remember, I see it, God did it then, he's going to do it again. Amen? See, it's important what picture you have of yourself obeying what God has told you. Do you hear me? All right, stop a moment. Close your eyes a minute. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. And just meditate for a second. And see, ask the Lord to show you some pictures of faith in action in your life. It can be way back, it can be current, it could be just an hour ago, whatever. I know you had to get some pictures. Amen. I know you had to get some pictures. I did this uh, yesterday when I was preparing the message. I, I just sat and I said, Lord, and man, I have so many pictures. I mean, they were, they were actually really videos. Amen. But a lot of pictures, amen. As you go back, you know. I saw the day that I got on the airplane to fly to Saginaw, Michigan. I saw that was a picture of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And when I come back from Teen Challenge, amen, and I pick up the phone trying to find the four gospel businessmen they told me to look for, I have a picture of myself in my mind on the phone talking to Albert DiArfa. Some of you, a lot of you don't know. I can't tell you the whole story now. Ralph knows. Talking to him and him telling me where they just started a meeting. That's a picture of faith I had. I said, my God, he's something else. Amen. Then I showed up at the meeting and get greeted at the door by two wonderful people. Amen. I want them to walk in. I said, man, they're nice folks. It was Ralph and Diane. So I have a picture of me walking through it, being greeted by Ralph and Diane, walking in thinking, man, those are nice folks. <laughs> See, you got to get pictures of faith in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you get pictures, amen, even when, you can get a picture, amen, when somebody gives you, when something bad comes at you, and you take a picture of how you responded to it. See, I got pictures, amen, when things bad, and I say, well, Lord, you're going to have to handle this. <laughs> picture of faith, amen. And that's how we got to live our lives, amen, if we truly believe, amen. You know, uh, think for a moment, you've got a lot of pictures, some of you, I hope some of you got some good pictures, amen, there's probably a lot more. But it can be for what you might think is too small. There's never such thing as a small picture of faith. In fact, all of them usually start off small. Amen. Sometimes we're thinking about, I want to have this big picture of nothing's impossible. Well, you know what? I have to have some other pictures before I get to that one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you know, maybe coming here to church today, amen, did you ever think about it, maybe when you walked in the building, that's really a picture of your faith, unless you had to be here. Some people have to be here, amen. But how many know you can transition from having to be to wanting to be? And the day you can transition from having to be to wanting to be, you made the newsletter in heaven, amen. Hallelujah, amen. They can get the newsletters ready. Amen. But think about it. Think of a picture of faith. Do you pray? All right. Maybe you haven't been too strong in prayer a lot, but then something happens. You get on your knees, you cry out to God, God. And then something happens and things get changed and delivered, amen, from what it looked like. And you go, and you remember back when, you hadn't done too much, but all of a sudden that day you dropped to your knees. Now you got a picture of faith. Amen. So sometimes you hadn't relied too much on God, but now you went back to the day you did and said, oh, my God. Woo, he come through. Amen. And so that's another picture of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. We got Christmas of hope coming up. You need to volunteer. You need to come out and help. Have a picture of faith of you helping somebody, of you being an encouraging somebody, amen, then you know what? That might become a picture of faith in their life. Did you ever think about that you could help somebody have a picture of faith? You could be part of somebody's picture of faith. Come on. See, Apostle Lewis, he's a, he has a big portrait of faith in my life, amen? Hallelujah. It's a giant portrait, amen? The only one bigger is God, Jesus, amen? Amen. And you have to see that, that you can be part of somebody's picture of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, decisions and choices. Decisions and choices that we make can be pictures of faith. The moment you made a decision and you made a choice, that can be a picture of faith. Amen. Every one of us, listen has an opportunity to have a picture of faith every moment.